Hi everyone and welcome to this video which goes through the reasons why people conform. This video has a particular focus on normative social influence or NSI or informational social influence, ISI. Let's get started. So why do people conform? The most common reason why is a phenomenon known as normative social influence or again NSI. This is when a person conforms to be accepted or belong to a group. A person conforms because it is socially rewarding or to avoid some sort of social punishment, so being ridiculed for not fitting in. It's usually associated with compliance and identification, which I've talked about in my previous video. So, a very good examples of normative social influence we have, or we will, go through in class. The elevator experiment being one, or adopting a new fashion trend. We do it because it's socially rewarding. We get compliments on wearing the latest fashion trend or a new skirt or top or dress, whatever the case may be. And we don't want to be ridiculed for not fitting in, so appearing deviant from the group. So usually it's associated with compliance, so publicly fitting in with the group but privately disagreeing with the group, and identification. So we may conform to the group that we identify with at the time. Informational social influence is another reason why, and it's usually associated with internalization, which as we know from my previous video, is the deepest form of conformity. So informational social influence, or ISI, is when a person conforms to gain knowledge or because they believe that someone else is right based on the information that they have been given, hence the term. So this can occur in unfamiliar and ambiguous situations. So for example, changing political parties or joining a cult. It changes beliefs and viewpoints on a semi-permanent basis. And we genuinely believe that the information that we are being fed is correct or right, based on, again, the information from the group or the perceived leader of this group. Cults are a very good example of informational social influence. And we've looked at these in class in terms of certain examples of cults where followers genuinely believe the information is true. Sometimes it is, but then sometimes it's not, as we have seen. But we must consider individual differences affecting conformity as well. So there's lots of different ways in which we can interpret conformity or that make it more likely or less likely based on the fact that no two people are the same. Ambiguity is one of these factors. If something is open to interpretation or inexactedness, that can drastically affect conformity. Being unanimous, so agreements made by all members of a group, as we have already talked about, makes the pressure to conform far more great or far more likely. Personal characteristics also need to be taken into account. Someone being low status in a group or in an unfamiliar environment with a group or situation will cause conformity to increase. So for example, a new student or a new staff member new to a particular sports team or more likely to conform because they look to others to know how to behave. Personality traits are also a factor to consider. People who score high on neuroticism in wanting to be liked or conscientiousness of wanting to be right affect social norms of conformity. So people who score high in neuroticism and conscientiousness in general are more likely to conform. Cultural factors also need to be taken into account. Some are more likely than others due to value group, valuing group harmony sorry, over individual expression. This is applicable to schools, information and organisations and parents to establish a culture that fosters conformity or individuality. So culture is not necessarily geographical. It can also be the culture or the vibe, in other words, the certain organisations want to establish, such as school culture, work culture, household culture, and so on. It is also worth mentioning the role of conformity when it comes to social media. This is obviously linked to several of the she concepts that we've covered so far this year. So social media has given people a way to create their own self-image and interact with new social circles. Because of this, we have more accessibility to real and fake news on the internet, television, radio, and of course, print media. This means more access to contrasting social norms and influences not accessible in an offline world. So traditionally, people are subject to conformity of physical social circles. So friends, family, teachers, influences in music, politics and movies, etc. 
But now with the advancement of social media, people are now able to engage in views and movements all over the world with people they've never even met. It results in a massive increase in the possible sources which may lead to an individual to conform to certain ideologies or views that they wouldn't normally have the opportunity to because of where they are in the world. Here are some examples from your workbook. So the storming of the Capitol, the Black Lives Matter movement, and the vaccination debate. There's been others as well recently where people will globally conform to certain ideals and certain ideologies based on the information that's been fed through to them through social media. So it makes our world a lot more accessible, but it also increases the likelihood for people to conform. So I hope you found that video useful. As always, any questions, let me know. Happy revising.